If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer this question on your own before listening on. In order to simplify this rather complex circuit of many capacitors into a circuit of just one capacitor, we have to obey the following equations for series and parallel capacitors. Let's write those equations out. So here is the equation we will refer to for series arrangements, and then here's the equation for parallel arrangements. We're going to do this sort of step by step, one portion of the circuit at a time. So for example, if we look at these two capacitors right here, we would see that they are situated in a parallel arrangement, which means that we're going to obey this equation. And so perhaps we can say that this capacitor is C1 and this capacitor is C2. According to this equation then, the equivalent capacitance would simply be the sum of the two capacitances. So we would take the five microfarads and add it to the four microfarads, which of course would give us nine microfarads. So that's going to be the equivalent capacitance for those two capacitors. If you look carefully, there is another arrangement of parallel capacitors that we can simplify. And it happens to be these three right here. So to find the equivalent capacitance for those three capacitors, we simply add the individual capacitances. So we'll have the two microfarads plus the three microfarads plus the seven microfarads. And when we add that together, we should get 12 microfarads. So what we'll do next is redraw the circuit. We'll collapse these three capacitors into a single capacitor whose capacitance is 12 microfarads. And then similarly, we will collapse these two capacitors into a single capacitor whose capacitance is nine microfarads. So here is that picture. We put a little red mark here just to remind us that the nine microfarads came from these two, and then a blue mark to remind us that the 12 microfarads came from those three. Next, we can combine these two capacitors together into a single capacitor. Now notice that they are in series, so we'll have to obey this equation right here. We can perhaps call this C1 and this C2. So we would have one over the equivalent capacitance is equal to one over nine microfarads plus one over three microfarads. If we add together the fractions on the right hand side, we would have four ninths. And then there's a little algebraic trick here. We can flip both sides of the equation around so that we would have CEQ over one, which is actually just CEQ equals nine fourths. So those two capacitors will be combined to give an equivalent capacitance of 9 fourths microfarads. In a similar way, we can combine these two capacitors because they are also in series. So we can set up a similar equation where we have 1 over CEQ is equal to 1 over 6 microfarads plus 1 over 12 microfarads. We'll add the two fractions on the right which gives us one over four microfarads. Once again, we can flip both sides of this equation around and we would see that CEQ is equal to four microfarads. So let's combine those two capacitors into a single one and then the same thing with these two. So here is that picture. Note again, we left a little black mark here to remind us that this capacitor came from those two and a purple mark to remind us that that capacitor came from these two. And also we changed the 9 fourths into 2.25 just because it looks a little nicer. So that was the 9 fourths microfarads. Okay, so now we just have to combine these two capacitors to get the final answer. These two are going back to being in parallel. So we can use the equation for parallel capacitors, which of course tells us to simply add the capacitances. So let's take the 2.25 microfarads and add it to the four microfarads. And this gives us 6.25 microfarads as the equivalent capacitance of these two. So let's just redraw it. And here we have the final answer. This is the equivalent capacitance of the entire group of capacitors, 6.25 microfarads. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click that thumbs up and also subscribe. Remember that you could stay tuned and send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen, and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.